Tom here from Lawrence Systems and PFSense 2.52 has been released. Well, it's actually been released a few days ago. I've been following it on Reddit and of course talking to people I know and you know doing the usual uh, updating internal systems that we have here. And so far it's gone really smooth. Now let's jump into though the major features in the 2.52 and the first one is this one right here. I know this is a bug that's plagued a lot of people and been waiting for it to get fixed, which is port forward rules only function through a default gateway interface. Reply to does not work in multi-WAN. This has been fixed. I'm thrilled because this is obviously something that hung up a lot of people on upgrading. And that's if you have port forwards on multiple different IT ISPs, essentially, uh, those port forwards may not work properly and in a multi-WAN environment. So uh, we did actually have at least one client, I believe, that this was a big hang up for them. And uh, yes, this is obviously an issue, but it has been addressed. The next big issue that has been addressed is going to be WireGuard. Now, WireGuard, sorry if you loaded it in 2.50 as a built-in function, it will not transfer into 2.52 because it's been moved over to a package. So because it's a package or add-on that you install, so system in go to the package manager and you can add WireGuard. It won't import your settings. You're gonna to have to rebuild your tunnels. There's no direct path for doing that. But nonetheless, WireGuard is back for those of you that are interested in using it. And I also did take down my previous videos because it's implemented slightly differently here. So I will make new tutorials. But for the most part, if you had figured it out in 2.50, it works very much the same. It's still WireGuard. They've just added more features and a little bit of nuanced difference and you know enhance the interface a little bit. I like what they're doing here. Uh, I really like to see the way this project's been progressing. It's been great. Now, back over to the next thing that I know a lot of people want to know about. What about Unbound? And that is another one. I know the crashing of Unbound, and you can use the Watchdog system to restart it, but obviously it shouldn't crash. And they have made the change to temporarily move back to Unbound 1.12x due to instability of Unbound 1.13x. Uh, and that's pretty important because, well, we don't really want DNS crashing. DNS is a uh, well, the source of many problems in general, we don't need more of them to be part of the crashing. So I'm happy that they solved that problem. And this is always some of those challenges they have over at, you know, NetGate PF Sense of, you know, upstream products having updates that have unaffected consequences when you integrate them as a whole. But hey, that, they did solve it. And like I said, temporarily downgrading that, no problem. Now, also in this list of things they fixed here were a lot of dynamic DNS options. Now they added a quite a few new ones and I really like that they stay up to date. They offer quite a few of them on here, but unfortunately I don't really use dynamic DNS for a lot of what we do, but I know a lot of home users do. So I think this is particularly important in the CE edition when people just don't have access to static IPs and uh, they do stay on top of that. So there's a lot of little fixing that was done in here and a lot more services added. Now I'll leave a link to the page because there's a ton of little fixes that were done in this particular update, but overall, I don't see any challenge or reason you shouldn't update to it. This kind of rounds out some of those problems that, you know, when you do a major version upgrade, some of the problems that may come with it seem to be pretty rounded out and stable now at the 2.52. But before you upgrade, let's talk real quick about the upgrade process. Backup. Please have a backup of your configuration file prior to doing it. I don't feel like I should say it every time because by now I thought people would know, but I still get a lot of uh, forum posts and things like that of, I didn't back it up and I need to figure out how to recover it off the system. But please back up. I'm gonna say that every time, I guess. Next, reboot your system prior to update. Go ahead and restart it once to make sure it boots up fine. Because if you have some pending problem, let's say a hard drive failure, uh, so it cannot read before or a SSD failure, if you cannot read the drive, but it has read it into memory, so the system's got this amazingly long uptime, the next reboot may not reboot. So if you compound that problem by also hitting upgrade, then reboot, yeah, maybe an issue. So I usually go through one reboot cycle. Cool, it came back up. Now we'll go ahead and do the update. Next, package updates. I've reiterated this a few times. This is very clear to me and the PF Sense instructions, but seems to be confusion sometimes when I'm looking at some of the forum posts on Reddit. When you are running the current version of PFSense, you should keep all your packages up to date. If you decide to stay back a version on PFSense, the packages still keep moving forward. They are going to expect to be on the latest version. Now, package updates may or may not require the newest version, 
But if they do, and you're a version behind, now there's a problem. So it is best practice to stay on the current version of PFSense. But if for some reason you are not on the current version, then you should not be updating the packages prior to getting to the new version of PFSense. So this is where some people can sometimes break or crash your systems because yes, pulling the latest packages when you're running versions behind can definitely be issues. So I just want to bring that up because I think it adds a little bit of confusion sometimes. But my overall is I think 2.5.2 is a great stable version that you should probably be jumping on and getting up to date on and new WireGuard tutorials I'll be working on. And of course, more people will be doing some write-ups and uh, using the new WireGuard system now that it's available in there. So I don't see any reason not to go to this version. It seems to solve a lot of the problems that people were having. And if you read through the fixes, there's actually a lot of little details, but they do cover a lot of edge scenarios where people have specific use cases that may have had problems in the 2.5 and the 2.5.1 that should be solved in 2.5.2. And if they're not, hey, get out there and report the bugs because that's what lets the team know that your configuration needs to be addressed. Uh, and then I start working on it. All right, and links below to everything I talked about and see you in the forums, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store, where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.